I usually ignore all the clickbaity, oh my god, newest and greatest early rune farm, millions in seconds, right? But one, this one they didn't advertise that one. Um, well, it's in the description if you want to see which video I'm talking about. But it was pretty clever. They used the Death's Poker's Frostbite and then reset it with a torch in order to kill it just as quickly as my Black Flame Tornado method. However, they claimed that farming that death bird, or cheesing it rather, was consistent, and it's not. Nope. The best case scenario, yeah, I was able to complete everything and get to the same level he did at 40 minutes. I don't know how he did it in 25. I highly doubt that, even with stellar RNG, but whatever. Um, but worst case scenario, it took over an hour. And that's the same experience that a lot of people in the comments had. And it's funny to see others arguing like, oh, it's because you didn't do it right. It's like, no, sweetie, it's just the death bird is a piece of shit. <laughs> Literally, you can do it verbatim the same way someone else does. You're going to get a different result. That's not consistency. That's just dumb luck. So it is much more consistent to use holy pots. I have seen some no hit runners do this. However, they always free aim it. And so that doesn't help me because I don't know how to do that. So I had to find where to position myself and just what distance the Deathbird needs to be from me in order to execute it properly, and I did. So I'm going to share that with you here. You need at least six, but ideally seven, just in case you miss the headshot, right? I'll go ahead and explain the aiming when I get to it. But that's why I'm starting off with the Cracked Pots. You get three of these, and then you can buy three from Kale in the Church of Ele. And then I'm going to buy one more in Weeping when I go get the Faith tier, because... Another thing that these videos don't keep in mind is you want to get all of this stuff eventually, right? If you're just running around and skipping and doing all this other stuff and just booking it to Kaled, you're skipping out on very useful items that anyone, any build, will make use of. So you may as well spend the time now to go get it. And so that's what I'm going to do. That's why I'm starting off as Prisoner, just to showcase that even at 16 Faith, and if you're starting off as Prophet, then you don't even need this, but depending on what you start as, at 16 Faith, you can kill this thing with 7 Holy Pots. And so that's what I'm going to go do. And another issue I had with that video is... It said, oh, if you don't meet the requirements for the Death's Poker, just go ahead and pump a few points into whatever stats you do need, and then you can always respect with Renala later. And that, to me, just completely defeats the point of an early game rune farm, because you're telling me that I'm going to have my build in less than half an hour, supposedly, but not really, because if I have to go respec in order to get the build that I do want, then it's going to take, jeez, getting the Ranala and a larval tier. Just to be generous, not even generous, best case scenario, I would guess at least 20 minutes, right? Because it's, even if you come up with some crazy build, one, you still have to go and upgrade your weapon, <laughs> because without an upgraded weapon, your stats don't really do that much, right? It's really the upgrades that do the damage, and then yeah, your attributes help it along the way, but only after it's been upgraded, so... It wouldn't surprise me if it takes you at least another half hour just to go get a larval tier and then go kill Renala in order to use it. So what you think is going to take you half an hour will end up taking you over an hour, right? Assuming you want to respec. And I'm over here going, well, if you don't have the stats for the Death's Poker, then you should just go and get the Dex and Intelligence tier. Because one, you have to go to Lyernia anyway if you're already satisfied with having to respec afterward. And I'm not much of a min-maxer myself, but, you know, you could be wanting to do a low-level build. Like, I've actually been doing that recently. I've been having some fun with low-level builds with co-op, and in that situation, yeah, it really does matter where my points go. So, telling me I have to go respec in order to have the build I want with this method? That just defeats the whole point. So you're better off just going and getting the Dex and Intelligence tier, which I'm gonna go do, because that's gonna be quicker still than just trying to kill Renala and get a Larval tier. And I'm not gonna skip things along the way. That's another interesting thing I notice about these videos that, like, try to bait you in with, oh my god, you can do this in no time. They skip everything. Like, one, why would you skip getting the Whetstone? Unless you're doing a very particular run, that thing is... you may as well get it. 
there's a lot of things you may as well get that they're nearby. Because here's the thing, if you skip the 5 seconds it takes you to get a Sight of Grace when you're near it, you just doubled if not tripled the time having to go get it later. And especially not getting other items that are useful for any build, right? Like sleep pots or these other tiers. Anyone can make use of that. And so you're not really saving time, you're just delaying wasting more time later on. And so I'm always gonna be telling people just get it now, right? It's on the way. And that's what I'm gonna go do. So for the most part, I will just be fast forwarding a lot of the running sections. And so this will simply be a do as I do, right? And then when I get to the death bird, that's where I'll provide more explanation as far as where you need to position yourself and how you need to aim yourself in order to throw the holy pots and do headshots to it. And sometimes you'll just need six, right? At 16 faith, six holy pots can do it if the bird is an ideal positioning. But even then, you know, you just have to wait for it to kind of glitch out when it gets stuck on a rock. But more of that later. For now, I'm just going to run a bunch of errands. I'm going to speak with Bok here because he does give you 10 mushrooms upon freeing him, which is useful because I need mushrooms and gold tarnished golden sunflowers in order to craft the holy pots. And so getting 10 right away is really good. And again, I'm sure most would want to upgrade their flask, so since you're right here, you may as well come and get the sacred tier. Alright, that takes care of the Weeping Peninsula. Now you have access to it and you have more sacred tiers for your upgrades. So next up, I may as well come over here at Keel Lake North. I'm going to get the Sleep Cookbook, which is good for anyone to have, but equally important, there's more rune items and the group of sarcophagi surrounding it. 
that I will use to purchase the recipe for crafting holy pots and the three remaining cracked pots from LA. Then I'm going to make my way to the physic in the church and then go get the tarnished golden sunflowers around the minor herd tree. Sacred Blade is a really good Ash of War to have for anybody, again, and it's relevant even to this run. I'm not going to use it, but in the event that you want to use it as like a finishing blow on the Death Bird for whatever reason, you know, this is really great to put on any weapon you can. I usually put it on a Strike weapon for the Skeletons because it, you know, Strike damage extra, but this usually one-shots them anyway and prevents them from resurrecting. Just a really solid Ash of War against those who live in death. Okay, and now I'm going to come back to the Church of L.A., get the three remaining cracked pots, and then- oh, Ronnie's going to show up. Eh, just hit her a few times. This way tarnished. May what? Mm, no sense in arguing. Yep, this sorry about that, but I need you to go away. <laughs> Wait, well, you're back. Alright, so it's 900 for the pots, and then a thousand for this cookbook. torch and then go ahead and give me more because I am going to get the short bow as well as the second gold pickle foul foot over here. And I'll use the difference to buy a couple arrows, or a few, rather. Um, how many did I get? Oh, I got 15. That's a good amount. Yeah, because it can happen where the Deathbird could be on a sliver of health, you know, if you didn't get all headshots, right? If maybe one of them was a body shot if it decided to move last minute. But even so, you know, a few hits to the head with arrows after you wait for it to freeze is good enough to finish it off if it's on a sliver of health, <laughs> which is funny. Um, and the reason I'm getting this Sight of Grace 1, you may as well, but more importantly, when you most likely want to start crafting more Gold Pickle Foul Feet, even after getting the three from Patches, the Penguinos over here have a really good drop rate for their four toed Foul Feet. On a good run, you can get four to five. If they're stingy, one to two. But it's just worthwhile to go over there and get it. But now, heading back to the Third Church of America, I'm going to take the Teleporter to Dragon Barrow, and then run all the way down the path, to get to Fort Ferrith, and then get Radigan Sword Seal, because depending on your starting class, you're going to need it. And then after getting the Sword Seal, I will may as well go to the lakes and make my way there, because again, if you're willing to respec, you have to go there anyway, and it's faster just to get the Dex and the Intelligence tier. And that's what I'm going to do.
I always prefer to get the beast repellent torch just down that way, all the way on the other side with the merchant, but, you know, since I'm only here for the Radigan source seal, I usually can avoid the rats, although sometimes they can bite you unexpectedly, so we'll see how they behave. Again, it's worth the extra, what, not even two minutes, I would guess, to go get it, but eh, let's see how they behave. And it's not just for this area, too, it's for all areas, right? It's just a very useful torch to have. Those dogs, oh man, having them stay away from you, and the rats, and the wolves. It even works on Ranala's wolf summons, which is hilarious to me, but makes sense, you know, it is a beast repellent torch. I wish it worked on the bats, though. That would be nice. But, oh well. Okay, so, once again, whole reason why I'm doing this, right, going all the way to the lakes, is because some people might have to, right? I mean, I'm starting off with a s class that could wield the death poker easily, right? Let me see. Yeah, 14 intelligence and then Radigan Source Heal would make up the difference. But... To be truly universal, you have to keep in mind every, you know, scenario. And there are several starting classes that would need the intelligence and dexterity tiers in order to wield it, even with Radigan Source Seal. Certainly the intelligence tier, because Radigan Source Seal only helps with strength and dex. I'm gonna go ahead and speak with Raya here, and then also that last sight of grace I got. Don't skip out on that. I mean, really you shouldn't be skipping out on any of the sights of graces, but if you must, certainly don't do it for that one. Because... did I accept it or did I just speed through it? Hold on. Um, because I'm gonna go back to that last gear. Yes, I did. I'm gonna go back to that last gear sight of grace in order to take the teleporter um, to the front gates of the academy, which then will lead me to another teleporter that takes me closer to the intelligence tier. Right now I'm on my way to get the dexterity tier. And then the reason I spoke with Raya is just to initiate the Volcano Manor questline, but I'm not going to purchase the necklace right now, although I could if I wanted to. I have enough rune items to do so. And the dexterity tier will be over here on this island, and I'm just gonna grace out. Sometimes you have enough time to open the map and fast travel back out, but eh. I don't have any runes on purpose, so may as well make use of that.
All right, with this one, do an extended double jump, just so you have enough space to land on that safely. And then the teleporter is over here. Be careful with the hand there, just in case. It got me the very first time I was around here, in case you haven't been here before. But that's the intelligence tier. Um, even with Radigan's Source Seal, I'm trying to think, would you still need the Strength tier? I mean, you could two-hand the Death Poker. That would be a bit um, annoying, though, having to constantly two-hand it after switching off from the Axe, but you could technically two-hand it, so... Technically, you don't need the Strength tier, but in the event that you would, if Radigan Source Seals plus 5 isn't enough, it would just be over here, right? When you come back to the Stormhill Shack, you would just go past the Giant, and then it's in a basin right there. But I have everything that I need, so I'm going to head back to Fort Ferrith. I'm going to actually add that to my favorites. And then go and do the Holy Pots on the Deathbird. Nope, not yet. Alright, so upgrade the flasks. May as well give them all into the blue. No healing involved, for now. And then, you only need the faith tier for this one. And then I'm going to equip my short bow, and then craft all of the holy pots that I can. And then equip them right there. I'll get rid of that just in case I don't accidentally use it. And then what I am gonna do actually, I am going to just, well one, let's do a timestamp here. So 31 minutes, just over 31 minutes doing all this prep work, which is fine by me because it has a much higher probability of success. But I'm going to make a backup here because I do want to do this several times in a row just for, you know, different scenarios that can present themselves to others. Alright, backup created. And so now, lastly, rest until nightfall. And head on over to the Deathbird. I'm going to scale this, I don't even know what you would call this, I think it's a skull, this blighted skull, and then I don't want the bird to notice me right away, so I'll dismount around here, and then just crouch for the rest of the way. You don't want it to notice you when it's close to the edge here, like when it's walking away there, that's fine, and then come over to this circle here, and then stand up. And then yeah, it should go over there. Right, as long as it's just not close to the edge. And then I'm just going to follow it with my bow, making sure that I stay on its head so that... Well, here I can just lock on until it turns around. It can take a bit for him to notice me, but once he does, I'm going to aim toward his head and then position myself for... A holy pot. I could technically shoot him with an arrow, but I don't want to aggro him too early. I do want to get the sneak attack when he does notice me. Like right there. Alright, so aim at the head, and then 
just when the top of his head is uh, beneath your crotch like that, go ahead and drink your physic. Throw one holy pot. And then zoom in with the up arrow on your controller. Wait for him to stop moving again. Oh, okay. Well, see, that's one thing that can happen. I'm not going to throw a holy pot there because it'll most likely hit the wing instead, and I need to have clear headshots. Okay, so same positioning as before, like right there. Throw a holy pot just to confirm a headshot, and then just keep throwing it afterward. Wonderful. I'm actually glad because, yeah, sometimes, like one time I did it, it he was just positioned perfectly and I was able to do it very quickly. Right? But then with that, you do want to wait. You know, just ideally you want to make sure that he's facing you and that, again, you're positioned over this circle here, right, that I'm on, and then you just keep throwing the holy pots. So that's basically, let's just round it up to 35 minutes, even though I've been taking extra time to explain, right? So at 35 minutes, ensuring a high probability of success, if not guaranteed, if you just are patient and know what to look for and what to do. Now I just have a much better way of killing this thing, but I'll go ahead. Actually, I think it'd be better if I just make this its own video and include the other test cases in that one. So for now, I'm just going to head back here and begin the farm. I'm going to rest till morning just so that I don't skew it with the possibility of the Erd tree giving me extra runes. And so now, I'm going to equip the poker and the torch. And then Radigan Sword Seal because some builds would need it, so I may as well put it on. Just for consistency on that. And then mix in my dex and intelligence tiers that would be needed on other characters too. And then I'll actually put the foul foot on my pouch just so I don't accidentally use it. And now I'm ready, so just drink the physic. Have this at the ready. And the video says to do L2s or left triggers. I have an Xbox controller, so it's left trigger for me. Followed by an R1. Yeah, and then you reset it. You have to do it pretty quickly, though. Well, actually, you're supposed to do L2, then R1, Torch. This is like three times. And then drink the flask after the torch, that's better. Yeah. Alright, so here's where I'm gonna take the gold pickle foul foot just before the next one gets frostbitten. And then run on back. Alright, that was a close call, but fortunately, yeah, I just wanted to make sure it would frostbite. Oh, okay, well, the gold pickle foul foot wore off. Yeah, so that's, yeah, let's see. So, technically, yeah, 44 minutes. Yeah, that was the best case scenario when I was doing that dumb, ch uh, I won't even call it a cheese method because it's just so inconsistent. Um, so yeah, after 44 minutes, should be level 5- well, actually no, I was a wretch, so here, yeah, 58. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so that, with the holy pots, 10 minutes quicker than my black flame tornado. Although, you know what? I still like my black flame tornado because, one, I get a bunch of good stuff, including a really solid Ash of War black flame tornado. Like, yeah, I want that. <laughs> Very useful for many things. I got a plus four Bloodhounds Fang, which you could easily take that to the capital if you wanted to. And I get access to Altus and all these other places I visit, so it really just depends. But this is really um, pretty solid, especially if you want the Death's Poker. Yeah, just don't waste your time with that whatever they want to call it. It's not a cheese. Um, just go with the Holy Pots, right? It's better, and you would want to go to Weeping anyway for more flask upgrades, so you may as well get it now, right? Again, you're not really saving time, you're just shifting where you're going to spend your time. So, yeah, after 44 minutes, if I have a much higher probability, if not almost a guarantee, of killing the Death Burt consistently, then I will take the extra time. Absolutely. But, you know, this actually makes me want to redo my black flame route because I did make some modifications to it so may as well. So I'll link that in the description too if anyone's curious.